there's the, there's the restart. If ever I become like a professional Counter-Strike player, it'll be my goal to do this to cast this just all the time. Just pretend to start and then, you know, seven seconds later say, oh, actually, we're not live. Yeah, I, actually, actually, guys. Just right. so they know. Just so they know. Certainly. All right. Well, it is going to be good fun. I'm still seeing Celos' name in here, and I'm, I'm, I'm really confused about that. But obviously, and also we've got Pythi. We have no idea who that is. I guess they might be tagged up incorrectly. Sometimes that happens. But we obviously we recognize Dumas' sentries and Benji as well. And... Oh, well, we'll see. Celos and Pythi, maybe too. I'm guessing that isn't actually Pytho. It's it's probably just someone who's nicknamed close to him. Yeah. It's hard for us to know, obviously, at this yeah. point. And on the other team as well, it's even worse. We've got DMX, which we recognize, Kenny as well, and Uzi. So, you know, three out of five is not bad, but Room Room and David P. <laughs> God damn it, France. What is going on? I know, I know. Perhaps, uh, perhaps an admin would know better and can inform us. <laughs> but hopefully. But so now, how, how should we go about it? Should we, should we just vroom vroom away? I mean, vroom vroom going? is a pretty decent name. It's a, yeah, I'm liking that. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. David is a good name in general as well. I mean, yes, I think supposedly one of, the, one of these guys should be happy, shouldn't it? And I can't remember who's the other well, guy. David P has the, has the happy face after his name. Yeah. So I'd, I really need to know who happy is, because happy is a strong player and mm. uh, someone we really shouldn't miss. But at the same time, and I can't remember because they made like weird lineup changes, didn't they? Maniac is still in the lineup, isn't he? Uh, I think so. Yeah. But that's um, yeah. I'm thinking of something else. That's because Super Fighter was recently added to Clan Mystic instead of Fiori. That's what really threw me off. The French man, they're they're making lineup changes, but that's really exciting as well. But enough about that. Actually, they did manage to do the ninth round finally, and we seem to be getting to be getting into it. So it's the first match here of the evening. A lot of Counter Strike coming up uh, right oh, here yeah. on the channel. We would be doing best of ones all the way until the grand finals which should hopefully start around 9, if everything goes to schedule. But here we go, on the, the first round. So yeah. let's uh, kick this one off. Yeah, um, let's see. We're currently watching uh, Benji up here in the apartments. Not really doing too much. But um, what, it looks like they might try and push the B bomb side, but they need to wait for the people that are actually in second mid right now, which is um, not sure who that is. I think it's David P and Uzi right now as we try and get the keyboard working, which is... Not functioning optimally, but then the me oh there we go. Is it working now? The mouse is doing working. well. All right. Well, inside the bomb site, we got two people defending. And obviously, these two need to hold on. That's a nice shot from David, but Pythi and Sentries is there. That's a double headshot in return. Finally, going to go down behind the new box, but it's still a two-on-three situation. And look at the rotation already coming in from the CT side. They're ready to defend this bomb site. And looks like we have Vroom Vroom right there. Right at the back, as the bomb does go down on the defense here of the side. Let's see if he's able to actually hold on. The bomb was like down, but they have such such a defense oh. to make. Great shot from Vroom already. Sentry's going to go down, and he's looking for the second one, just playing the dance. And he's got a teammate. It goes down there. It's just a one-on-one -on -one now. Dumas with three points of health left, and easily shot through the pillar in the face. Yeah. Vroom. Those were two great shots. They, I think he actually ran out of bullets in his P2, uh, P250 then, so that was pretty cool. The first hurt shot he came in with was really strong. That was just, uh, that, he made that look easy. So that's going to be the pistol round in favor of Bisex. Not at all bad for the Swedish team here. A good start, especially because they're on the less favored side of Inferno. So now it's just a matter of seeing whether or not they can keep it up like that, or if they're going to fall to the body armor, head armor deagle by coming out from Nameless. Interesting. Definitely. There's a bit of a pop flash action going on there as Pythi and teammate go in for the aggression, picking off one. And it looks like they're just going to hold the ground on Banana, not push, not back off too much. And good, so far, a nice little defense. I love that little aggressive poke. Mm. And the reposition from Pythi of B Sex. And things calm down as pressure goes on to mid. You can see a lot of action going on over there. What are they going to do, though? I mean, I. I love the fact that BSEX have managed to invest into these, these pistols, especially because they're deagles as well. That's a lot of confidence in the deagle, but especially Swedish players we've seen sometimes seem to be able to pick them up and do rather well with them. So maybe we could see some really cool headshots. They're going back towards the B-bomb side, though, on the terrorist side, and it's going to be Pythi defending there, kind of all on his own. Here we go, Pythi trying to defend. He does manage to get one, but he's down to 19 points of health. His position is now known, but his teammates are coming in to help. He buys enough time, gets a second thrag. That is actually so important right there. And Kenny S, though, he's on position, on site with the bomb, but he's got no help just yet. GMX, though, he is there, but Kenny S is going to provide cover. 
And he's going to go down just as he gets the plant. So that might just be enough for Kenny S to work with. But three players are bearing down his position. He takes down Zelos, gets the second on Benji, looking for the last. It's a one versus one. Deagle for Dumas. Can he do it? He cannot. Kenny S with a great defense under such pressure. Yeah, that's fantastic. That was a four man by Kenny. Very cool stuff coming out. It's now a second round in favor of Nameless. And uh, well, B Sex. They're going to be have to do Biko one more time. But in the fourth round, they will be able to find that's where it really counts, as obviously that's pretty much how it is every time, isn't it? You know, that fourth round is going to be always important. So we'll see how they can do it. Right now, Kenny, as we started off talking him, you know, hyping him a little bit. So I'm glad to see that he's doing so well early on. Doesn't make us look silly. Definitely. So it's like Dumas is going to get a nice little position here. Moving up boiler, bit of pre-fire there through the window. And it seems a, a pretty defensive round, trying to gain position. Kenny is going to take down Dumas though. And Pythi trying to defend. They've, they've spotted now quite an aggression up Banana. And Pythi actually, any information he made a gave might be a bit misleading there because it was a quick, a quick push. And then now they're falling back again. So it's yeah. quite unknown really what's going on until Kenny does take down Benji. And, and this is, I mean, this is really reasonable play coming out from Nameless. It's not, you know, super brilliant, but it's cool that they're sticking together as a team like this and making sure that if, if someone should get killed, they're basically keeping the rifles close. You know, no one from B Sex is going to be able to pick them up. Sentries is in the archway here and actually he's getting back on from Pythia as well. Kenny S is really the only one they could potentially steal a rifle from, but it's not going to be easy. So I feel like they're playing it safe, but also smart here on. Um, on the terrorist side, and that's good to see them not taking any, any unnecessary risks, really. Yeah, that's always always such an important sign. I mean, teams have to take it seriously, and it's it's one of the, the biggest steps towards a professional mindset. Like, give nothing away, be ruthless, yeah, and never let your opponents in on the map. And Sanji trying to get an exit frag with his five seven. Love the five seven. I've got to say, it's yeah, five seven is uh, feels like the best pistol to me in the game. It so is. Weird. I think it's close to at least. It's like the P250 only on steroids. It's like you know, a little bit better, and um, it has more bullets in it. Now it's the fourth round coming up, and we see the buy coming up, but it's not going to be the most impressive buy I've ever seen. You know, for Mars and a lot of M4s, no AWPs picked up, and a little bit of lack of grenades. Only sell us here with the um, with the kit currently. It's going to be fun to see if they can if they can hold on to this, and if they're going to play aggressively or defensively. Early grenades out on Banana here, not really a sign. That's just something everybody does. But yeah, and they fall back immediately. So it looks like a slightly defensive play coming out here from the CT side. It certainly does. Let's see how Nameless decide to take control of the map here. And so far at the start of this round, you know, those grenades really did slow their approach. If they wanted to go up, gain some control of Banana, that you can see the kind of effect that that had. And right now we can see Uzi is actually trying to regain some kind of control on Banana, just trying to see what kind of positions b have. They can see that there, there goes the flash, no one behind cart. I'm gonna check sandbags as well. So this is good, this is a good result here for Nameless and they can probably leave Uzi there if they want. Yeah, and in the meantime, Dumas actually went down to a grenade. I have no idea how that happened because, well, he must have almost been double grenaded down. That's a very good pick off early on. Kenny taking a lot of damage in return, but he's still alive and that this, well, it's a reasonable decision for them to go for the B bomb site right now because they must imagine that B sex are going to be throwing a lot of people on A, but actually they haven't yet. So this could be a good thing for the CT side. Good entrance here from Uzi will take down Pythi. Now Sellers going to come through the smoke and that's almost instant suicide. He runs out of bullets as well and that's going to be it. This is now two on four and they should re they should save these two rifles right now. And what a nice time as it is, the pulse. <laughs> and Sentry's going to take <laughs> a very nice position here in construction, I wonder if he's going to be able to get any Franks here. I mean, this is this is a bit suspect. They've got to know that someone is, could be lurking there. Yeah. So let's see if Sentry is able to get away with any shenanigans with that FAMAS. Oh, look over at the archway. If we shift to... Oh, actually, Benji goes down immediately. Look at that room room. He was on the way. He was all the way on the flank. He was actually making sure that if they tried to save, he could pick up a couple of people there. So that's really, really... That's some foresight going into that one. Sentries might have picked the best spot to hide in just because he, uh, they're not going to check it. They imagine he's already run away. And there you go, he's going to be able to survive just about. Keeps that FAMAS. And that's going to be, I mean, every little thing right now is quite important for PZX to keep alive. I mean, you can see that money situation is quite dire at this point. And they're going to go for a save. I, feel, I mean, have we jinxed them here? Is that it? Because right I now, right now, at this current stage in the game, they're five rounds into it. Nameless have four rounds in a row. And are looking to take the fifth one unless this one from us can somehow kill a lot of people. That's a really bad start on, on start on the CT side. You know they needed a lot more. So um, next round is going to be their time to shine, or, or they're not going to at all. I think. And Sentries is going to be the man on the camera. Let's see if he can do something with his famas. He's the one guy who does have a gun. 
for the CT side here. So let's see if you can do something with it. Let's see if B-Sex can find their salvation with sentries. Occupying kind of a central spot on the map, you know, right here in the arch where you can go kind of both for A and B fairly quickly. So I like that idea. Pythi taking a shot over by the B bomb side. We'll get a kill in sentries. There's one. Now it's back to a two on three, and this, this is fairly manageable. He hasn't taken any damage yet. They can win this round, but now it's going to be down to Celos in that B bomb side. He's the only one there defending, and there's nobody coming where sentries is. So see how this goes down. Yeah, Celos tries to get the first frag. Can't quite manage it, though. Uzi does deal with him. Unfortunate for Zelos there, <laughs> floating in the pond. Swimming with the fishies. Exactly. Sentries comes in from CT spawn. This would be quite special. I mean, now I, I would argue again, it's time for Sentries to save this from us. He's done it one round. If he throws it away now, it'll have been all for nothing. And so, yeah, it's just one of those things. I mean, the likelihood of him doing a one on three, even though it would be very impressive, it's just such a slim chance. But I guess, you know, throwing with it from us, he can still buy a better rifle this time. So maybe it is worth it after all. It's a really hard call to make at that point in the game. 5-0 and in favor of Nameless. The French team is looking pretty strong here on the Terrier side. I feel like they could almost they could almost be fine with B-Sex taking every round in the in the half here and make it 10-5 and they would still have a pretty decent half. If they get any more than this, it's going to grow out of control. Certainly, and, it's, and it seems like we do have right now just the standard action here, but we do have uh, we have Zelos, who's kind of pushed towards the car there on Banana. And it looks like he's backing away there, just checking out the minimap. And we have a lot of movement now from Nameless up mid. They are gathering forces, ready for the push. There is the peak. Can he S? Not able to hit the kill, though. But still, he doesn't die. He's still got position. But Sentries takes his head right off with the AWP. And it looks as if they are going to just sack the idea of going towards A up middle. Now it's all about Banana and Nameless. This has got to be their last effort right now. Yeah, definitely. Seek DMX is putting up smoke that's going to land over towards the CT spawn. And you could see Room Room in the corner. He's going to throw another smoke, which is going to land by the um, by the coils. But nobody's standing in either of those two places, so it's not going to be a big problem here. Nameless are still running into kind of a trap, and the rotation is coming in as well, so don't see this working out. Uzi getting a one headshot there. DMX with another kill, and now it's actually back to a three on three. This is a little bit slobby play coming out from b -Sex. They could have done better in this situation. Certainly. Now they try to do what they can, but... Really, uh, it's in their interest, perhaps. I mean, should they go for this? And they have yeah. a lot of money there. Now they in have their to. Hands. Yeah, I mean, definitely the equipment value you can see is up at seventeen thousand dollars. That's what's on the CT side, but they have to go for it. DMX just shutting it down with a great headshot on Benji. Centrix with Centrix with a return kill, but he goes down immediately. Now it's Dumas, and now he has to run away. There's no time anymore. And well, DMX goes down, and Uzi can just hide forever, and it'll no never be a problem for him. So, yeah. There you go, another great round there from Nameless, and a lot left to be desired from B-Sex yeah. as we move forwards. And, and I mean, they're going to go for a, a bit of a buy here, you know, a few, uh, three and three ones, and you have a Famas in the mix there. So it's quite a struggle on the buy. You can see not a huge amount of nades yes. on their side. I mean, and worse still, the nades that they have, and this is, a, this is a little bit of a mystery, they have a lot of flashbangs, but only one smoke grenade. And smokes are what you use on Inferno to actually buy time for yourself, which right. means that if Nameless now bait out the smokes and, and waste a lot of time, they can have nothing to defend with. That's the one smoke they had just used. If now, if Nameless just wait now, they're never going to run into another smoke in this, in this round. And that's a big thing. That's really big. And Kenny S is on the approach here up Banana, just checking every single angle as he moves forwards, ever forwards. Kenny and S he's approaches. picked up that weapon. I mean, we have to mention this. He's picked up that weapon. He's no longer an AK. Now it's that AWP and definitely looking forward to seeing what he can bring us here. Let's see if he can get this kill. You can see with the X-ray that there are two, two CTs lurking there on the left. But can Kenny S take them down? We've got 50 seconds left in the round. And Kenny S is, again, just slowly creeping forwards. Eventually, the CTs will be revealed to Kenny S. And there is the flash. He saw the direction it came from. This is great play as well. His teammates are actually actually smoking up behind him, so he has to look that oh, one wow. way. And there's the grenade. Oh, it should have pretty killed Python then. I have no idea. It must have landed in front of the cr in box instead of behind it, but it looked like it was solid. And Kenny S knows what he's doing. And there, finally, the grenade does take him down. Forced to a close range shot. Zelos does fall to the AWP of Kenny S. Now, as the bomb does get planted. And you cannot have a better person almost than Kenny S covering your ass when you're planting that bomb. Orp in his hands at the back of the site. Let's see what he can do with this. Now, as Benji and Sentries try for the retake from either side one from Construction, one from Banana. 
Yeah, and they have a great crossfire, so they can cover all angles here. There's Kenny with the shot. That's going to make it a double now. Sentries is coming in to try and make something happen. He has to move quickly. He doesn't have a kit picked up, so it's a one on two with almost no time left to do it. They can just waste time. He's not won this round no matter what happens here. Kenny just hiding in the background. And there's the no scope to finish it off. The triple kill from Kenny, and it's going to be 6 0 for Name. There's actually 7 0, in fact. It's, that's a very, very good start. And B6, I mean. I don't think they're going to give up, but they are, they're, you know, heading towards their doom here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is far from over. Of course, it's Counter-Strike, that's the beauty of it, but it is not looking good from a momentum perspective. Things aren't, and they, they're just going to, you know, there's a Deagle there, they're just going for pistols. Let's see if they can do something with this. I did like how last round you mentioned about the low amount of uh, smoke grenades and how they, they kind of realized that and then went aggressive. Because that's yeah. kind of the idea. You can't play so well defensively. So aggressive play is a good strategy to go for. We've got three players with pistols for the CT side for b -Sex, over at Banana there. But it looks like they're going to rotate uh, Zelos back down through to A. Up in the apartments as well as Dumas going down. And David is going to go down afterwards to Benji. So a good one-for-one -one trade for the CT side here. That's what they're looking for. And you know if they can bring it back to a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe a local deagle shot like Zelos has here. And Celos is one of those Deagle players, so why not? Why not try it? Yeah, magic can happen and frequently does with the Deagle. And as it's just a question of whether, whether Zelos is going to unleash it now. And Nameless creep up. Kenny S, first man with the AWP, going to take the corner right there. Sentries drops him. GMX with the revenge frag. And Pythi going to find himself a weapon over at Banana, as now he realizes that, it, that he has to be fast with the rotation onto A. Zelos there, he's going to come out, hits one headshot with the Deagle, looking for the second one, doesn't find it just yet. There comes Izzy, looking for the shot. He's got a teammate, he just has to hold on a little bit longer, and Zelos doesn't even need to. He does make that frag, beautiful play there. And we picked him up, and it, it, uh, it uh, came <laughs> that, you know what we said. Abracadabra, there was that Manji that you were talking about. Two headshots make it look easy, and that's the first round in favor of BZX. Very, very cool round. I mean, yeah, so it's not all for nothing. The Deagle isn't as bad as people always say, but it, it does take a special kind of person to, to wield it to that kind of perfection. And now the ninth round is coming up. Kenny has an AWP, and there's one on sentries as well. Now b -Sex. more than anything, they have to win this round because their consecutive round loss bonus has been reset. They're going to get only $1,400 for losing this round, and that's just nowhere near enough. Yeah, and I love at the start of this round how aggressive b -Sex were, pushing three players down Banana initially to see if they could you know, catch any single player from Nameless pushing their way up, but actually, in fact, Nameless playing it very cautiously, smoking it down, and just keeping it cool right now. And Kenny is going to go for the peak once again. Oh, and he misses. In fact, can't even shoot in time. Sentry takes him out. Pythi, aggressive on Banana. He's going to go down. It's all on Dumas to lock down the B side now, but the bomb was spotted over at A, it seems, or Dumas at least has the call to kind of play a bit closer to A so that his rotation is faster. Yeah, gotta make. Oh, that's a great shot from Celos. Headshot midair on GMX, who was trying to jump his way down into the pit. Maybe they can still hold this site. If Celos is going to play like this, there might still be a chance. But David has got the triple headshot in this round, and it will make it two on one. Now it's on Dumas here, and the bomb has gone down as well. DDK, this is not really a nice situation for him to be in. It is not, and he's going to fall. David P is going to be the one. What kill in that round, man. Mm. That was, uh, the last one wasn't a headshot, but the first three ones were. And I think he got almost two consecutive, like almost in a, in a row, just like, you know, one by one over at the middle. That was sentries going down as well to him with the AWP. So David P stepping it up um, a lot here in the round. And now it's going to be the 10th one coming up. And this is this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to BZX. Now look back to pistols once again. And not exactly sure what their economy is like, but they might almost be forced to double eco here. And yeah, I mean, they, they are buying some deagles in there again. It did work out for them once. And Vroom Vroom very low, but it's heartbreaking that they didn't manage, for them, that they didn't manage to take him down. Leaving him alive is quite problematic. There goes the smoke to really, that's going to really confuse uh, BZ, so the sex. They're not going to get any easy answers as to what happened there. But now they're going to know, as soon as they spot this aggression, it's going to be quite obvious oh. what's happening. But still, two players in B from B sex who are not rotating. And we have Look at Nameless Mars. so pushed up, and Benji from the back. Yeah, coming out is very good. And now it's going to be David and Kenny with return kills. They still only have pistols to work with, so it's not really worth it. And this uh, rotation from Pyth is going to get caught. Room, room was there waiting. And well, Pyth is going to be run over. It certainly is. And I mean, little did Room, room know, but there was actually a second one coming from the Banana Avenue. And I mean, this is just looking quite grim. They, they managed to, the fact that they pistol up again was, was really, really troublesome. Yeah. I mean, their, their economy is in shambles. It is so hard to deal with.
And he's going to walk into the middle. Is there going to be a Deagle waiting for him? Almost. He's really battling it out here. That's a good shot, but even Whoa. if he gets the kills in here, it's... Oh, oh. oh. sentries with two... Or, yeah, that's, he's looking for the fur, but I mean, that's... that's uh, <laughs> let's, let's jump into a replay. That was too good. That was very interesting. It's going to be now 9-1 to, to one in favor of Nameless, but... Um, uh, we'll see. We'll get the replay there, maybe. But right now, it's uh, it's a big problem for the Counter Strike Terrace yeah. team. I mean, this is what it's like as well. We're we're talking about a qualified team versus an invited team. Exactly. And it is to be expected that the invited teams are going to be uh, just a little bit better. But um, these sex, you know, maybe maybe they can pull some rounds here. I mean, if they can get up to four or five, they still technically have a chance. There you go, Benji. Going to take down uh, GMX. I mean, that position right up the bench, so far down the mid. That aggression is proving quite effective. Going to take down Kenny S as well. And they are just constricting Nameless right now. Vroom Vroom has to ignore Banana and come out and just, just back the CTs off their flank. And Benji going to come in from the balcony there. Takes down David P. Zelos chiming in onto Vroom Vroom. It is going so well now for BZX. Such a good aggressive round from them. And it really threw off Nameless, who were getting into such a groove. Yeah, that's nice. That's really good. I mean... Trying something that's different is the most frustrating thing sometimes to watch a team that just does the same round for round and loses round for round. You know, if what you're wow. doing isn't working, might as well try and change it up. And pushing down the middle like this worked really well. One on three here for Uzi with 22 HP doesn't seem winnable. Indeed, but we've seen crazier things already, but no. There we go. So here we go. We're going to bring back the Deagle action on this replay. Let's check it out. Yeah, that first shot's really good. And the second one is like... He gets a lot of time to, uh, well, that was actually the second shot, but he gets a lot of time before he actually gets that second shot in. So, deagle headshots, one deeks, they're always worth watching again, aren't they? It is the, one of the most satisfying things in the game. And Nine to two is the scoreline, DDK. I mean, if they can get it to, f you know, five rounds, just lose one more, that, that could, go, I mean, it, that could work. That can work. They can work with that. Here they go, though. We've got Nameless pushing straight up Banana. They do just gun down relentlessly the defense put up by Pythi. Although Zelos is there to try to get those return frags, and it does happen. It's a three on one now. Just room, room left. He's going to try to spray down sentries, but no, the USP is enough. And yeah. there is another round. I mean, that should be for somewhat for free. They did take quite a bit of damage there. I mean, they lost two players. It's a lot of money. Uh, right there, when their economy is, is already in such a horrible state. Uh, let's see now uh, do you have how things go. The one thing they have going for them right now, BSEX, is that they denied the bomb plant that round. So it's a little bit less money on Nameless. And actually, if they win this round once again, the counter terror side, that is, with and you know preventing the bomb plant, they might force an eco on the, on the terror side. And that's at least a partial eco. And that would be worth something at this point. They're still, they're still light years behind, but... You know, as you said, crazier things have happened. They can make the comeback if they have a really strong, um, a really strong T side somehow. Yeah, definitely. And is he trying to get his way up banana again? And let's see if he's able to pull anything off here. No, he's going to back away a little bit because of the smoke. Understandably so. Wait for it to dissipate. And just, just providing presence right now over at banana. Just keeping B sex afraid of peeking is already the job done as GMX over in apartments does take down one player. Now what do BC, uh, BSEX even think is going on? They, they, you can see that they haven't started to rotate yet. The information is really being restricted. And so it's hard for them to make a call just yet. It definitely is. And you saw the, the instant change up from Nameless. You know, they were looking to get the PKP. They got it at A instead. And now they're going to go for the A bomb site. Trench, centuries with the kill in return. It's back to a 4 and 4 GMX taking down Dumas. That was a good uh, kill there. That's a 45 degree turn he makes to get that kill down in pit. And that's really important because I think actually Dumas should have probably had the kill on GMX. And that could change the round a lot. Instead, now they take over the A bomb site. Bomb goes down. And sentries and Celos once again have to think about whether or not they really want to do this 2 on 4. It's. It's not reasonable for them to try and push this. Here we go, David P. Got it down. So he does. 10 to 3. The scoreline right now. Things are so, so tough for V-Sex. I'm really, really rooting for them. I mean, you know, screw the kind of being impartial thing. I want to see them get at least five rounds. Come on. That Let's would be it. nice. And they want those five rounds as well. They actually forced the buy here. We're in the 14th round, so it's the second to last round. They could have waited for the 15 one and gone for a full buy. Instead, they go for, you know, armor on everyone and deagles and two M4. So, yeah, they definitely realize as well it's now or never. Like, they need those five rounds. Otherwise, there's no reason to even play. And um, this what we have. Again, presence on Banana. Zelos getting behind that car. Deagle in hand. Spammed down by Froom Froom. Froom. That little car, that little bit of wood there, that plank, 
and still they just remain. They're just staying static, holding position right now on Banana by the logs, not being aggressive right now. Getting the spam in, just trying to see if BSEX are going to poke out once more. They've got the bomb dropped over a second mid, and they're yeah. just waiting to see what is going to happen here. Just kill a bit of time. Definitely taking our time with it, and I mean, it's been working out for them so far. They haven't really had many rounds where they've been super aggressive. They spent some time waiting, and because BSEX peek them every once in a while and push up sometimes, it's worth it for Nameless to just wait, wait the time here and, and hope that they're going to get even more pickoffs. Right? It's back to a defensive setup. Benji going to pick up one kill on David P. That was all the way over in, uh, in the, by the boiler room. And now they actually, are they going to rotate all the way to B? This is a big risk from the CT side. If you look at the minimap now, they're leaving basically one or two people by archway, but they're giving up a lot by doing this. And here we go. They're going to make their way in pipe with a shot onto Uzi. Magnificent stuff there. And he's going to fall back with it. Onto some better positioning over at construction. And here comes the next peak on the defense. Here, name has come in. The smoke goes down, but it does not st uh, stop Pythi there. Taking down GMX. It's just one left. Kenny, yes, now, as Sentries takes down Vroom Vroom. It was a wonderful defense. And it almost felt like Nameless were a little bit indecisive. Yeah, that was some. Um yeah, and decisive and also some weird timing coming out from them. Not really yeah. sure what they were doing. Like normally you'd have a smoke for the CT spawn, but you could, s and it did work. But then they, they walked in. I mean, they walked in before the smoke pop, which means that Pythi knew which angle to shoot at, and that's why he killed the bomb carrier like that. If they just waited for the smoke to pop, then it would have been significantly more difficult for Pythi to to actually get that shot through. But that's how it goes. Now we're looking at four to ten, a long road ahead of B Sex, but at least they're heading in the right direction now. This time they're taking up an aggressive position on Banana, and maybe eventually, yeah, I think they're cool. they're going to rotate Pythi back and just leave Celos alone at Banana. That means they're going to have four people in the A bomb side, and this is a pretty good plan, I think. So we oh, are the last round, but look at this Uzi being so sneaky. I hope one of his teammates doesn't die due to this. And what did we just see? Time well, stands still. Right. I have absolutely no idea what just happened. I'm wondering if Celos, I'm wondering if there was actually a smoke up that Celos just walked through, because I imagine Uzi must have well, would have shot him if that was the if that wasn't the case. There is like a Go TV smoke bug where sometimes you know in the game the smoke is there, but for us on Go TV we can't quite see it, and that's like a really weird thing. But it happens every once in a while. It's really uncommon, but it does happen sometimes. And I'm wondering if Celos just crawled through smoke then, because it feels like Uzi should have shot him immediately. Yeah. Strange. Uh, I do feel happy at least that we've gotten to four rounds. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they have such a strong chance in this round still to take it. Although Uzi is uh, in somewhat of a compromising pr position as far as their chances are concerned. Are uh, going to catch that flank yeah. uh, now? So uh, we're just trying to work out what exactly is happening here. And we'll I think it's know, just uh, I think it's just a pause going on. The, the timer is still counting down. There's nothing special about it. It's, that's just what it is. Um, whatever the, what the reason for the pause is, well, who knows? It could be. Somebody okay. spilled their, their drink in their keyboard or whatever. <laughs> Something like that. God, the I usual. That. That, that. You know, that's even, that's even worse these days when you have mechanical keyboards. Because uh, when you get like liquid inside the switches... Yeah. Don't talk to me about it. Yeah, that actually happened recently to me. I got lucky, though. Yeah, I got, I like, got, lucky. I got like a, a new key. I just got it from our sponsor at home. I just got it, and, um, and I put like an energy drink in it. Oh, that's like the, that's like the worst it, thing it you sticks. can put in there. Yeah. I can't get it out. It, it, like, yeah. And now I've... I, like, I've made it so that it's only like the Q button that's now sticking and everything else seems to be working all right. Oh, the yeah, keyboard actually yeah. works. Yeah, the keyboard works. It never stopped working. It that's, just like, the, but stuff. the keys were sticky. It was really weird. Sometimes you can get really unlucky, like if it's something sticky, like uh, whatever, and the, the residue, like the, the liquid mm. will kind of, you know, dissolve, uh, not dissolve, uh, rather dissipate. Yeah. And just is left this like sticky residue on the switches and that can actually just kill, kill it completely. Yeah. So mechanical keyboards, they're expensive. You don't want to mess with that. No, so definitely not. Definitely. Yeah, but, happens. you know, now it's working again, so I'm happy. But hopefully that's not what's happened to any of the players. Yeah. Hopefully it's just <laughs> yeah. like a minor thing, somebody having ping issues and then they're pausing and it's fine. Whatever the situation is, though, you know, we can try and, and, and spin this however we want. But the fact is that Nameless, they are the favorite team. Right now they're on the less favorite side, but mm -hmm. they're doing very well. I mean, this is, uh, is going to be very hard for, uh, for BZX to come back from. I mean, we're talking about them winning this round, first of all. That's like... You know, they need those five rounds. Then they need to win the pistol round in the second half, and they need yeah. to win the fourth round in the second half. If they get that far, I'm going to give them a, a fighting chance. But if before yeah, they do that, agreed. I feel like it's really, really far-fetched. Agreed. And actually, we're back in the game, so we're going to jump. Oh. And here we are. So quite interested to see what's so going to happen here, considering that Celos, crazy start. Look at that. He's down, in the, he's down in the underpass. He's down through into Vietnam or 
Mexican or whatever people call it. People have very many different names for this weird tunnel on Inferno. He's just waiting down there. David P's up here shooting through. Not really catching any he kills. He is still waiting there. He could actually walk up behind all of them, Celos. He's not doing it though, and David is going to get a return kill. Dumas gets one on DMX. So and it's a one for back. one so far. They're coming back, and there's Zelos underneath. Still just waiting. Oh no, he could just come up too soon. He'll get one frag. Looking for the second one. He's going to take down Vroom Vroom as well. And there's one more from second mid. He might just be aware of his presence. But no, he's going to say enough is enough. Falls back, cuts his, his, uh, his profits and just wanders on back right. to B. So what we definitely know is that there was a smoke bug. It wasn't just that Uzi decided not to shoot Celus as he walked past. He, he definitely couldn't see him, which means that Celus is just a genius. He went in through the other pass, yeah. through the smoke, hid there, waited long enough to come up, get the double kill, and now Kenny is alone. He's going to get the bomb down though here in a one on three, and it's the 15th round, so there's really no saving rifles or anything else that. They're just going to go for it. There, there you is. go. So they're going to get the, the fifth round. And b sex they can be really happy with that. Because as you yeah. say, if they do get that pistol, I mean, of course, there's ifs. There's always ifs involved. But if they are able to get the pistol, like you said, there is a fighting chance for b sex And that'd be really, really great to see them string some rounds together and make this really competitive. But it looks like we have... Uh, oh, there's a very, very quick pause there. No, no, that's what, that's what oh, we right, saw of just course, before. Yeah. So, so I mean... Yeah, you're right. There's like a series of requirements that need to be fulfilled here. And one of them is the pistol round. I think one of them is the fourth round. If they get those, though, I mean, we could be looking at what's like, um, was it going to be basically an 8 or 9 to 10 scoreline if they do that? So, I mean, even though they're five rounds behind, those five rounds can go really quickly if they win just some key rounds. And that's really how Counter-Strike works in general. But let's see how this goes. The second half is coming up here. B-Sex versus Nameless. It's the Faces Cup in January and the first game of the night. Here we go. Me, Pisces jumping up into the balcony here, and they are actually not really deciding to rush anywhere in particular just yet. They are creeping up the middle. They got one player up on B with the bomb over towards B as well by the T slope, and they're just taking ownership of the apartments as much as they can here. Into, into mid they go. Pisces out of boiler doesn't spot anyone over at quad. So let's see how this goes now. This is looking quite good positionally from B Zex. Yeah. You know, owning those apartments definitely a big, uh, a big thing here, especially if they can make their way down the pit. But a nice smoke goes up from the CT side, making sure they can't really get out of the apartments that easily. Pythes over towards the canopy, shooting down towards whoever that is. I think it's CMX down in the pit. But nobody's actually dying yet. This is really strange. And they have the archway as well. This could be a beautiful B push if they decide to do it. And yeah, they will. This could be really good. This is going to be very, very interesting here. Uh, let's see if the defense can be enough. There is Vroom Vroom right at the back there. He's got support oh. as well over at Coils. But can they hold on? Here goes the peak, surely. And there's one player, Dumas, going to try to take him down. He does do so successfully. David P, GMX, and Kenny S coming in from CT Spawn through construction. Can they do it? Benji going to put the stop onto GMX and onto David P. And let's see well. exactly what can be done here. Looks like Sentry is going to take down... Kenny S and B Sex, that what a beautiful pistol round. As you said, such control yeah. from them. Discipline. That was, that was actually a very, very confusing round. Because the way that the way that Nameless had set up their defense, they had a lot more defense at the A bomb site. But they actually forced the terrorists to go to B themselves by smoking up the apartments. And then in the meantime, they also let go of the archway control, which means the push coming into B wasn't just from Banana, it was through the CT spawn, essentially. Which meant that the two players in B had really a hard time covering every angle. But I'm really wondering about what Ruru was up to. He was in the back behind the new box, and mm. he, you know, he peeked out when they were basically pushing on him. Like, you, you want to peek out as they walk into the site. So I'm not sure what that was about. It looked like he was a little bit distracted then. But that's, you know, that's one of the premises, that's one of the requirements for BTX coming back in this game was winning this round. So let's see if they can keep going. You know, I'm happy that they managed to do that. And I love how they had the bomb over at T-Slope whilst they were basically in almost CT spawn and like one was pushed almost as far up as Banana as you can get. Yeah. And they're really keeping those options open. And it looks like we're going to converge onto a mid push here with all of the BTX players' sentries yeah. on the quad side there. And let's see if the CTs can defend this. It's currently the armor buyer that's coming out from Nameless as well. You know, they got P250s, all of them, no deagles or anything, any nonsense like that. But P250s, armor and body armor and, um, and head armor, really good stuff. So I'm wondering if they can make this work. GMX spots out one, does no damage at all, but it only takes a single bullet from the P250, especially at the closer range. Here we go, looking for the headshots. Does find one dink there, but not frag, unfortunately, for him. And he has left the pit defense. Here comes Bullets raining in, manages to find a frag though. That crossfire proving useful, but all of his teammates are down and he will fall as well. Three players left for B-Sex as they take down that round. So actually still, you know, a very decent result 
And uh, B Sex are seven to ten now on the score. So they have made this a they have forged themselves a yeah. fighting chance. They have, but I still I still maintain it's it, that fourth round is another requirement. It could all fall apart in one round in the fourth round, and that's what it comes down to. Nameless, they're back to uh, to Eco once again. The French team don't quite have enough to make a buy here, but that's pretty much standard. But um, the round after this one, I think that's where B Sex really have to prove themselves. <laughs> they're just getting absolutely gunned down in the smoke there. Not too much they can do about that. And Haiti taking down David P over it was very simple cleanup there of the Eco. So that's that is good. That yeah, is nothing. Good for B Sex. Nothing special going on here, just nope. uh, you know, rifles against pistols, and that's how it works generally. Uzi and Room Room, best case scenario at this point, maybe try and get some kills somewhere, you know, pick up a rifle, maybe save it. If, it. if they can do that, that'd be amazing, but a kill here or there would be good. Uzi looking for some exit frags, and maybe even they, with the names, they, they try to make castles just say funny, funny things. It could. I mean, I understand. That would be my goal, too. Yeah. If I was a player, <laughs> definitely try and... Pick a name that's really weird. There we go. Dumas and Pythi with a double kill each. That's going to bring us into the 19th round. We're now looking at 8 to 10. Still in favor of the French team, Nameless here. They are the, they are the invited team. B Sex, the qualified team. But here is that fourth round. Nothing but M4s. And look at that. They're all M4A1s. So they're all with the silencer on. 10 less uh, bullets in the magazine. But, um, you know, some benefit uh, in other areas, though. I see Dumas taking a very defensive position here, right at the back, trying to cover his teammates as they move up second mid. And a pretty standard setup across across the map for CTs and actually for the T side. I mean, they're trying to take ownership once again of the Palmas. They push one player down into the boiler. It's Pythy again. You can see him just poking out there. And a smoke going down onto Arch, courtesy of Kenny S there. And it looks like they're going to fall back onto B, it seems. So let's see what's going to go down here, and this is like Uzi's able to take down one player at Banana. That's going to make them think twice about B. Yeah, definitely a little bit questionable to um, to be peeking up alone there from, from Benji. I mean, he, I'm ideally in that situation, if he wants to peek over towards the sandbags, over towards the entrance of B, you want someone flashing you in, you know, a flash that goes all the way above and just pops so that once you peek, you can just kind of do it more or less safely. But um, one man down early on for B-Sex, not what they were looking for. Now it looks like they're going to push towards Quad and GMX. They have two people in the pit. This is such a strong defense from Nameless. I don't see them dropping this situation at all. Oh, GMX not able to find any frags, and now they're gaining position. They're just creeping up, and GMX, they, they're finally, GMX does take him down. He gets David P as well, and Zelos onto Kenny S. They just fall like dominoes, and now they have the sight. They have the smokes. It is such an easy setup. Uzi goes down, and wow, Nameless. They yeah. are getting demolished. Big misplay from Nameless in that round. Um, and also just really good shooting from, from B-Sex. We can't really take that yeah. away from them. But in a situation like that, when you have, like, they had one person by library, they had two people in the pit. And what do you want to do when you have that kind of setup? What do you get at least... The reason why it's so strong is because as soon as the T start to walk in towards the site, they walk in towards essentially like a triple crossfire. And if you just have a little bit of timing, you can shoot them from three different angles. And what happened instead was kind of the, the terrorists, they, or the CTs, they got shot down one at a time instead. So a little bit of lack of communication. And b just, you know, capitalizing on that. There is that fourth round. Now all of a sudden we have a game on our hands. It's still going to be tough for b but they actually have a fighting chance. They forced the eco. Well, no, actually, look at that. Room Room buying an M4. Oh, I think he just had extra money. He's just equalizing. They're not actually making a buy. He's just yeah. equalizing the money. But still, this is good stuff from the Swedish team. They're fighting back here. Yeah, let's see if Room Room can do anything with this, as the only player with a rifle might be instrumental. We've seen rounds like that previously. But we have a creep right up mid there with yeah. nades as well. And in they go, smoking off the quad side, the boiler side, into the arch. Looks like so far they're staying together, moving into CT spawn, taking down players. You try to flank them, and there you go, Dumas. Great defense there as well. And it's just two players left Uzi <laughs> and Kenny. Yes, they've uh, lost their M4, and it's just the pistols now. Yeah, it's an interesting round this one, but heads up play from B Sex to cover themselves as they walk into what archway. Uzi's going to pick up an AK though, so that's a pretty good start. To, or a little, you know, so it's going to be good for their economy here on Nameless side if they can keep this AK, and he will run away with it as well. That's the. That's the right call. Now it's on Kenny to see if he can find the second one. And he's walking down the middle with his Nothing knife out. just yet and, uh, for Kenny. Oh, there's a smoke as well. They're playing very safe, using every, every resource at, at their disposal. 
And it would be quite funny if Kenny S manages to pull something up here. Hiding below in the crawl space, will he pop mm -hmm. up at the right time? Kenny S lies in wait. He's waiting for it. Uh, he must realize there's someone behind him. Yeah, there's oh. the grenade on him, wow. and that's going to bring him down to 26. And Pyth is going to go and find him. Too bad, Kenny. Too bad. That's going to make it 10 for 10 now. The scores have actually equalized. I'm impressed by BSEX, you know, the given Nameless start. And, you know, let's, let's remember Nameless haven't won a single round in the second half. So this is really good. But now there's an AWP on Kenny. There's one on Sentries, though, as well. It's going to come down. This is one of those key rounds, again, where the momentum can really change for either team. And Kenny S just rushing straight up into the apartment. It's going to look for the quick pick on. Look at that. Oh, look at that beautiful play from Kenny S. So fast, that smoke. You'd see he's on a mission. And he delivers. He yeah, really it's mind-blowing. I mean, I think we started off introducing Kenny S as one of the aggressive orpers that'll take risks, and that's one of the reasons why he's fun to watch. Well, there you go, right up in the apartments, and Sellers is going to get exploded from that shot. And all of a sudden, this... I mean, Sellers was actually important in this round. He was supposed to push apartments and cause a distraction. Now they're just pushing in blindly into the B-bomb site. They're running through their own smokes with flashes and everything, but Uzi's going to pick up one kill. And Room Room is also in his head. About a good flash comes out. There's going to be a double kill from Uzi. And this push is not really working out. Wow. Great double kill in return from Pythi, but it, I don't think it's enough. They're looking, their bomb isn't down yet, and the rotation is coming in. Yeah, great, great play there from Pythi. And let's see if this can happen. They're on the site, the bomb is down. This is going to be very, very hard, as you said, but oh, GMX takes down sentries as he goes for that shot. And now it's just all down onto Pythi. The pressure's on, takes down GMX, and he gets a second too with the headshot. There's the third one. He knows it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, anything can happen right here. He's going for the shot, but he can't make it. And finally, it will be Doki that stops him. That was uh, that was pretty darn close. Yeah, going, you know, presence of mind on David P here as well. As no, he has enough time to pick up the orb and go and defuse the bomb. So that's smart play. Just a little detail at the end. Very, very cool round from Pythi. We can't take that away from him. Those four kills. The two first were really good. The two last maybe shouldn't have happened like that. I mean, a little bit sloppy play also from the CT side, but. I really, really do question why B Sex decided to push the B bomb site after having lost Celos over by the uh, the second mid, because that's such a that should have been a dead giveaway from Nameless. They they see one person in second mid, then they hear the smokes and flashes of B. They know exactly what the strategy is. It's what a lot of teams call the NIP. So um right yeah of course and it looks like Sentry's going to make his way up in like finding himself an aggression from Nameless. We do get a revenge frag. Benji chiming in, but there you go, traded by Vroom Vroom. Great play there, but the thing is, three versus three, you're looking at a, a more favorable situation for the terrorists who can attack wherever they want as three, and it's up to Nameless yeah. to pick, uh, to, to try to defend with a one on one side and two on the other. So that's going to be really tough for them. Let's yeah. see how this goes. But keeping that in mind, it does kind of make sense that they have one guy at B where there's like just one choke hold for him to hold. And he's also holding out by Banana, which means he can see them coming and call for backup. So that's, you know, what they're doing makes sense given the resources that they have right now. Pythia with the smoke. And I think that's going to land by the car. Kenny almost getting called with the smoke out in his hand. Is he going to get the kill? He's up close. He takes the oh. shot, but Dumas will yep. send him flying down in the pit. And another kill coming in. And that's a really good round from Bisax here. We're now looking at 11 11, unless Room Room can come in here with an M4 and kill three people. I would love to see just that from Room Room. He's going to make the attempt from Library. Nah. It just looks doesn't look like he's gonna go in. I mean that would no. be quite suicidal. I mean. I mean this is actually this is what this is smart play. It's it seems a little bit boring, but what he's really doing is he's saying, okay, if they're gonna peek me and I can get an early kill, then I'll probably go for the one on two. But as long as they let me stay in a one on three situation, I'll just walk away with the rifle. And um, this is heads up play. This is how you're supposed to play the game. And um, it could mean a lot in the in the later stages to have just a single rifle saved. Yes, yeah, very well played from Froom Room to keep that rifle alive. And we enter the Thai territory, 11 to 11. Yeah, but here's the... a roller coaster so far, actually. Yeah, and they can't buy on the CT side. They just don't have the money for it. They have the one in four that they saved, and everyone else is going to be on an eco round. So there's a chance for B-Sex to actually take the round lead for the first time in this whole game. And that has got to be a big momentum change if that happens. I mean... This is a really, this is all of a sudden, this has gone from being like a really slightly boring stomp game to being a really close game. I think this is anybody's game at this point. Oh, certainly. Let's see how things transpire here. We have Pythi trying to move up into the balcony. As soon as he you know, feels like the opening is there, he's going to go for that. And bomb dropped over at T Slope. They have three players just gaining ground over at Banana. And we have also Dumas rotating back around through to T Slope from second mid. 
back up into the mid. And GMX, great peek there. That's such good timing. He got so much information there as well. And now they know that there should be a lot of action going on at Banana. A lot of players, bodies over there. And they've only got pistols. They need to know exactly where they're coming from. And it looks like they're going to try and get the fight. We've got David P on the mid. Yeah, this is really aggressive play coming out from the CT side, but it seems to be working out. Sentries is right there, he misses the shot, and Uzi will punish him for it. Sellers running and gunning around the corner <laughs> like a maniac, but he's going to get the kill nonetheless, and it's back to a three on four situation. It's going to be another kill coming in there from uh, from Sellers. So a good double kill really stabilizes the situation here from the terror side. It'd be heartbreaking if they lost this round. And there it is. Nate's going to come in. Great M4. A1 pick onto Benji, and then Zelos in turn, and GMX can come in. He's going to spot Dumas right behind three boxes and that is just such an easy take back and Anders you look sad um, I am sad that was that was an eco round okay the one M4 and it look I mean it's a really really good thing as well because it, it shows you just then you know he was in the library last round he was hiding and we were talking about whether or not it was slightly boring play instead it's a great play that M4 really paid off but let's see the replay here look at how they stack up he actually hits the guy behind new box and takes him down really low I mean what is that almost 20 HP or something Gorgeous. like that yeah and a bit of a team damage in there, but GMX wanted that last kill. Yeah, they made the call after that, and GMX knew exactly where to aim. So brilliant retake from Nameless. So if anyone is in doubt about you know the value of saving a single rifle, well there it is, the double kill, almost a triple kill. It would have probably been a triple kill if um, if his teammates hadn't stood in the way from saving the one from just saving one rifle. And now Nameless have a round lead, and B Sex, they made the buy once again here, but they are they're running out of money. They are indeed. And look, we have actually have three CTs over the kind of quad side, actually, there. And David P with a pick on to Dumas through the smoke. Good play there. That's going to really halt the aggression and keep ownership of the apartments in favor of Nameless, the CT side, as the bomb is over at second mid. They have a few, few bodies over there as well. And Benji's going to try and push up mid. This is going to be an A right here. Or it looks like yeah, that to begin with, at least. Does. But that's a strong setup. He's at least towards the quad side here. There's one. GMX going to be taking down Benji and Kenny. And GMX once again kills left and right for the CT side. And Kenny's waiting for the final one there. Pythy going down. And there was no bomb plan that round. And that's a big deal. Now we're looking at 13-11. They have the money to buy here. And mainly because Pythy also had enough to be able to drop for Benji, I think. But if they don't win this round... They are going to yeah. be dropping really low. It looks like they're running out of steam at the moment. It seems as if Nameless are starting to really just find their feet again in this match and really remember, like just remember that, that they are the they are the team that should be winning here by far. And oh, Kenny, but Kenny's going to go. Is he going to go for that same aggression? No, he's going to take it even further. But look the at the mid, rush coming in. This, this is a B push. Just no. This train is uh, just on the tracks now. And Uzi, he's trying to stand in the way. He gets the one kill. They line up for him. He could have got a great double kill. He pulls out the pistol instead. He goes down. There's still one guy at the back of the side that's room room. He's got the triple kill already. He's trying for more with the pistol. He gets all four and there's that quad and nameless make it to 14 rounds. A very, very cool round wow. from room room once again. And just just the thing that I mean they, they committed so many players aggressively over towards A there as well. I mean that was uh, I mean they got the information so quickly exactly as to what, what was happening. Yeah. And it was so well played. I mean, that, that's a situation where your B players really have to hold on for, a, for a, just, just a short amount of time. And they did it so very well. Vroom Vroom going to toss it over the HE towards Logs there. Not going to find anyone just yet. But they are so close to the victory at, at right now. And after that round, they're going to be feeling so, so good. Yeah, and even closer if you consider the fact that B6 probably won't have enough money to buy in the next round if they lose this one. So it's going to be basically an eco round for the last round from them. That's not good. So. It's all on this one for the Swedish team. They must win it. They are only a few rounds behind, and that's a great shot from Dumas, killing and ducking practically at the same time. Look at how they're trying to boost up here to look in behind the new box, but unfortunately, nobody, and actually for the first time in a long time, nobody's behind there. And they actually, uh, Dumas actually killed Kenny S there at two yeah. up, on, up on mid, and Kenny S has such a presence there that that's a really powerful, powerful kill. That's one of the most important kills, perhaps, that, that Dumas could have, could have gained. And... Let's see how they use that. Looks like they are setting up for some shenanigans over at B, but we have a bit of a push there coming in. Could catch some players with nades out, but not quite falls back. And once again, I mean, this, the, the timer on the round, this round is kind of ticking away. There's only 35 seconds yeah. remaining, and Vroom Vroom ready with the flash there.
Uh, this is, I mean, this is this is really critical. You're right. This is good observation as well. BSEX running out of time for this round. 20 seconds on the clock. They need to move right now. A good kill from DMX in return. Flash comes out from Room Room. He's going to run through, but I actually think he bumps into... Yeah, look at that. He bumps into <laughs> them in the smoke. But Uzi and Room Room, they have this on lockdown. Nobody's coming in here. Dumas does get a good headshot, but it's already too late. Even if they get the bomb down now, it's a really, really hard defense from them coming out here. And here we go, Vroom Vroom going to come in from construction there, trying to take three boxes, finds Pipe. Pipe going to put an end to him, the revenge frag there. David P coming in onto uh, Dumas, can Dumas do this? He is making the dance, and Dumas now, as GMX has to take him down, can he quite do it? GMX spamming around the corner, finds the kill as Dumas is going to fall. There is the defuse and the 15th round yeah. for Nameless. And now let's look at it, how much have they actually got now? It's 11 to 15. And, um, okay, they do have enough to buy, So and that bomb plant really making a big difference as well. That that saved some of them. Benji, I don't think, would have had quite enough, and they would have really had to save on some grenades. So b sex with just enough money to make the buy for what might be the final round. Right now, they're fighting for overtime here on the on the, on the Inferno. It's a tough break for the Swedish team. At the very least, they have a decent buy. I mean, they've got, yeah. they got quite a few nades, uh, and they have AKs and so on. But here they go up, banana. But look at this, nameless. They just want to get aggressive, but that's going to prove the end of their little banana trade right there as Pythi just guns them all down. And they, sh they can't just wait now. It's so early in the round that they have a lot of time to play with. And you can see that's kind of what they're doing. They're just holding their ground. Three players left for Nameless. And that's going to be really hard to deal with. How, like, how do you defend here? You need to get information, but you can't really afford to take risks and peek. It's, I mean, it's so tough. It's also tough because the kills have happened so early in the round that the terrorist team has a lot of time to work with. It's not like they are on the gun to push to any one side right now. They can get the information about where the CTs are and then decide from there on out. And right now they've got one guy scouting the B-bomb side while everybody else is pushing the A-bomb side. Where, I mean, Nameless, I actually wouldn't mind it if they either just all kind of stack the middle so they could rotate to other bomb side because having like a two to one split here is not maybe the best thing. And David P gonna open up one frag. That is the return from Dumas. Kenny S put to the test, pulls out the USP, but that's gonna be it. It's going to be another round for B it's in a sex. They're gonna be pushing it to 12 to 15. Another three for that overtime that they so, so, so desperately want. It's really impressive. Pythia and Sentries have 22 and 23 kills respectively, and that's in spite of the fact that they've been behind pretty much the whole game. So they're really stepping it up. I mean, they're doing a fantastic job of carrying their team right now. But is it going to be enough? It doesn't look like it at this point. It feels like, I mean, if they push it to overtime, then they still have to keep fighting against a team that's been doing really well. It's, it's really tough for the Swedes, but I mean, it's not done. Not All hope is not lost yet. It certainly is not. And it looks like... We're having a bit of shy play from BZSX as far as Banana is concerned, taking quite a while for Sentries to work his way up there. And in the meantime, Pythi's going to go down. Yeah. So things aren't looking so good there for the attempt for BZSX losing a player so early. All right, it's going to be a chicken dying in the meantime. What are we f what are we facing here? 12 to 15. And... Um, Looks like a push up towards the middle. Kenny's in the background here waiting. He's going to peek out, and it's going to be a great headshot on Dumas. We had a grenade out. Double kill for Kenny. And then Sentries is going to take him down. But it still brings it back to a four on two situation. And this could be the end of a B set as X. I mean, they've got Sellers and Sentries left in a two on four here. Very, very tough position for win from. And it's down onto Sentries. He just can't die. That, got, that player just will not die. Finally, Vroom Vroom will fall, but Sentries cannot do it. There's another player to stop him. GMX is going to get the frag. That's going to be it. There you go. 16 to 12, the final score between Nameless, the old recursive lineup, and BZSX, or BZX, as we Yeah, or BZX. We well, the fact is that this could have actually almost been like a 16 5 game. Instead, yes. these set they, they brought it all the way back, which is pretty impressive. So we have to them, give them credit for that. But the French team, they were favored coming into this. They were also the team that was invited. So, um, you know, best of one like this on Inferno, definitely very hard to play against a team like that. Certainly was. And uh, I think, how do you feel about the performances of the players? Do you have, like, a, does someone stand out as MVP to you? I mean, we saw a lot of great stuff from Pythi, despite being on the losing yeah. team. Yeah. I mean, I think um, Thorin who, you know, I generally don't like questioning Thorin because he's, he's a wise man. Um, and says, he bites back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you never know, you never know, do you? Um, yeah. But he's, you know, made up a really good point saying, you know, it's, it's a little bit bad mannered to give MVP to the, to the team that loses. Like, that feels wrong somehow. 
Um, who was the best player on um, on the other side? I'm not sure. I think Room Room played like I think some, yeah, some really strong rounds. I might have to give it to him. It feels like actually, he really held it down a lot. Um, he was he was the instrumental player in the round when they were able to save a single yeah, M4, exactly. and he was able to get almost the, the three frags, and yeah. that that gave them that momentum to yeah. then be able to win. Because I think they got basically all the rounds after that. Yeah. I, think. I mean, I must say another thing, which is that I mean, I feel like Kenny's. Kenny played well, but not as well as we've seen him play. But it, it, Inferno is not really a map for Kenny anyway. Like Inferno is not particularly an orb map. If you see him on Dust Two or Train or something, it's a really different story. So I feel like Kenny did pretty well considering the map, and uh, that's delightful to see because we actually have seen him sometimes um, just completely fail when he's been on maps where he hasn't been able to use the orb much. It's been that's true. it's been a little bit hard to watch sometimes because you you know you see him the do so well on one map, yeah. yeah, and then the other map it's kind of not. So happy to see him maybe maybe sort of put more maps into his arsenal of, of maps that he can play, that, that's good. I did like that one little play that he made, which was obviously like something he's probably done hundred, well, hundreds of times where he just basically got the good spawn, just like through the smoke, so it covered him as he could just go over to Boiler, went straight yeah. up into Palmas, just did the flick shot on the guy in, yeah. in uh, second mid, which is of course like a complete reaction shot because that guy can actually be anywhere. Yeah. And I mean, that was just beautiful. But that's like something some- like, That's people, like people classic can go Kenny S as well, isn't and, it? And uh, they, they can go and try that actually yeah. in a game. I mean, you just have to be as good as Kenny has to get the flick shot. But, but yeah. uh, the next game is going to be the Ooh. former Asana Dragons, which is now that the, they're going with Leet now, 1337, against the SKLGB mix. So, guys, stay tuned for that. We'll go to a very short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 